Hi friends, welcome to my recap of Watchtower Study Article 27. This is very interesting. They claim that their theme verse is found in Psalms 25, says that the only way to have a close friendship with Jehovah is to fear him. Well, I mean, that's true of the God of Watchtower. The only way to have a close friendship with that God is to fear him, which is what the indoctrinated do, right? They're afraid all the time, but it's not truly the God of the Bible. So Watchtower pulls this verse completely out of context and then builds a study article around it, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Let's dive in. Let's take a look at the preview. As used in the scriptures, the, the term fear is broad in meaning. Depending upon the context, it can refer to terror, respect, or awe. This article will help us cultivate the type of fear that can motivate us to be courageous and loyal in our service to our Heavenly Father. All right, so there it is in the red box. You see, Psalms 25, close friendship with Jehovah belongs to those who fear him. But notice the actual verses, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Where does Psalms 25 discuss close friendship? It's just not there. In the book of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is continual submission to him in humility, and it consists of a hatred of evil. Nowhere does Psalms 25 talk about having a close friendship with a God who has an organization run by men who channel him. Not at all. So let's see what this article has to say. Paragraph one in the box, what qualities do you think are essential if you want to maintain a close friendship with someone? In the next box, however, as the theme text for this article states, those who want to have a close friendship with Jehovah must fear him. So they, they tell the indoctrinated to read Psalms 25, 14. And it, of course, says nothing about having a close friendship with God. Paragraph two there, continuing on, no matter how long we've been serving Jehovah, all of us need to maintain a healthy fear of him. But what does it mean to fear God? Paragraph three instills terror into the minds of the indoctrinated to prep them to accept the lies. So after paragraph two, even if the indoctrinated wanted to verify that this is talking about close friendship, or even if they felt that something was wrong, they're forced to move on to paragraph three. They're bombarded by the fear tactics. So paragraph four immediately begins with Satan, as you'll see, and what they see is true. The God of this organization is a vengeful, angry God. Paragraph five, what's underlined, goes into saying that Jesus had such godly fear. And then they cite Hebrews 5, 7, which there it is, in purple and bold, do you see that? But I want to take this opportunity to talk about something else. Notice verse 5. What's underlined? Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he, he that said to him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. So Christ fulfilled Psalms 2. When God said, Today I have begotten thee. Okay? I want to show you Acts 13, because it expounds on this, and I'm going somewhere with this, okay? So moving down in green, Paul says, God has fulfilled the same in that he has raised up Jesus again, saying, this day have I begotten thee. And we're going to, while we're there, let's move down to Colossians 1.18. It says, he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. I'm showing you this, because Jesus was not created. He was begotten. He was begotten by God by being the firstborn from the dead, never to die again. Because Christ was raised from the dead, never to die again, those of us who are in Christ will never die again and will be with him forever. I'm just showing you that because we were in Hebrews chapter 5, and I wanted to expound on that to show you and explain to you how the Watchtower's interpretation of Jesus being a created being is completely false. And I'm showing you from the very verses that they use to support their claim. They're pulled out of context. Let's keep going in the article. 
What's underlined? We also know that Jehovah loves us very much and is affected by how we respond to his guidance, really. We can either make Jehovah feel pain or make his heart rejoice. So the question is, what does it mean to fear God? It's not talking about hurting their, God's feelings. Fearing God is to hate evil pride and arrogancy, and by this fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So in paragraph six, we hear from this sister named Adrienne, who said in the box, why would I want to do anything that would put a barrier between me and Jehovah, the source of my life? Really? Look at Colossians 1. What's underlined? Verse 16. For by him who, Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven, on earth, visible and invisible. Moving down, all things were created by him, Jesus, and for him, Jesus. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Look at John 1, verse 3. All things were made by him, Jesus, and in purple, in him, Jesus was life. Who is the source of our life? Jesus, not the God of this organization. Another strikeout, Watchtower, because this God of this organization is a fraud. He's an imposter. And I also still have my little friend, Jersey Boy, this dog here. So you might be hearing him snoring in the background or moving around. Paragraph seven, what's underlined? Such prayers deepen our respect for Jehovah and they strengthen our resolve to avoid doing anything that would damage our friendship with him. It's not about friendship. Paragraph eight, we can maintain our fear of God by studying the Bible with the goal of learning from both the good examples and the bad examples. Be courageous in the box. The Bible introduces us to Obadiah with the words, Obadiah greatly feared Jehovah. How did this wholesome fear affect Obadiah? Down at the bottom in the box. Jezebel hated Jehovah so much that she tried to wipe out true worship in the northern kingdom. She even killed many of God's prophets. Without doubt, Obadiah worshiped Jehovah during a difficult time. So now the emphasis is going to be about the difficult times that the Jehovah's Witnesses are living in. Notice the rhetoric that they use here. When Jezebel was hunting down God's prophets to put them to death, Obadiah took a hundred of them and hid them. Moving down, if discovered, courageous Obadiah would surely have been executed. He didn't want to die, but Obadiah loved Jehovah and those who served him more than he loved his own life. So look what I wrote next to that. Serving Jehovah means you must love him more than your own life, even when facing execution. Pointing down to the woman looking out the window, right? Modern day Jehovah's Witnesses are under the same threat. That's what's implied here. Paragraph 11. Today, many Jehovah's servants live in lands where our work is banned. They show the secular authorities do respect, but like Obadiah, these precious brothers and sisters give to Jehovah what belongs to him, exclusive devotion. They demonstrate their fear of God by obeying him rather than men. And then there's an example of Henry who was doing work in Africa where it was banned. Okay, let's see what else they come up with. Paragraph 12. High priest Jehoiada feared Jehovah, and that fear moved him to be loyal and promote true worship. Jezebel's daughter, Athaliah, usurped the throne. Moving down, we hear about how she tried to murder the entire royal line, but Joash survived. Moving down in the orange box, Jehoiada was loyal to Jehovah and did not tremble in fear. Paragraph 13, when Jehoash was seven years old, Jehoiada again prov pr proved his loyalty to Jehovah. He formed a plan. If it succeeded, Joash would become king, David's rightful heir. If the plan failed, Jehoiada would most, almost certainly lose his life. Do you see that? Paragraph 15 in the box. The account about Jehoiada can help all of us to develop fear of God. Christian overseers can imitate Jehoiada by remaining alert and by loyally protecting God's flight. There you go. Remember, if Jehoiada's plan failed, Jehoiada would almost certainly lose his life. Moving down in the pink box, 
Finally, we can all take a lesson from the chieftains and the Levites who supported Jehoiada. Let us loyally support those who are taking the lead. So basically, obey the elders. So they cite Hebrews 13, 17. There it is. Look what's underlined. Obey them that have rule over you, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account. So here's what is terrifying. Elders who do the bidding of men and therefore lead the flock astray will give an account to God. Now that is terrifying. These elders... They, get, they need to give an account to God. If they don't repent and turn to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then when he comes, they will bow before him as their judge. And they will give an account for the things that they did. The commandments of men. That's terrifying. And look at the photo, which goes with paragraph 15. Here's my question. What does working for an organization have to do with anything. All right, in the box. But after Jehoiada died, Jehoash listened to apostate princes, really. The result, he and his subjects began serving the sacred poles and idols, deeply hurt, really. Jehovah kept sending prophets among them to bring them back, but they refused to listen. They did not even listen to Jehoiada's son, Zechariah, who was not only Jehovah's prophet and priest, but also Jehoash's cousin. We got family involved. In fact, without any gratitude for the family to whom he owed so much, King Joash had Zechariah killed. 17, Joash did not maintain a healthy fear of Jehovah, and things turned out badly for him. Jehovah had stated, those despising me will be treated with contempt. So the moral to the story in these paragraphs is like Jehoash, you could be assassinated if you are not afraid of Jehovah of Watchtower. Look at 19. Jehovah does not really ask much of us. That's a joke. Moving down, when we fear God, we will be able to face future tests and stand firm like Obadiah and Jehoiada. Nothing will be able to damage our friendship with Jehovah. The whole point of this article was to instill fear and terror in the indoctrinated because that's the only way... <laughs> they can get them to remain loyal, is to keep them terrified, which is what Deuteronomy chapter 18 says is the M.O. of a false prophet. It says if they, if anything they say, one thing they say does not come true, then it's not from the true God. They should not be feared. Don't fear them. The Jehovah of Watchtower is a fraud and an imposter. This article is a waste of time and it's built on lies. Turn to Jesus. He comes with rewards for those who serve him, friends. He'll save you. He died for you. He is the true source of life. Turn to him today. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.